Now, I've done a lot of flying on planes, and on five separate occasions, I've had a is there a doctor on the plane moment. Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry I have to wake you. You a doctor? That's right. And most recently, is a few months ago, a lady who was going to the bathroom at the back of the plane. This was before the plane was taken off. I literally just sat down and they made the announcement, is there a doctor on the plane? Please come to the back. So I go to the back and this lady, she just got up from the bathroom, then she passed out. Uh, she went to the ground and lost consciousness. And it turned out that she was having bleeding and bleeding to the point of causing her to have syncope where she passed out. So. She eventually regained consciousness, and uh, I did tell the flight attendant that it wasn't safe for her to fly, and that patient or that person was upset, a little upset with me that she couldn't fly in the plane because she just wanted to go home. Um, but regardless, it was the appropriate decision. And I've seen thousands of very interesting medical cases that had nothing to do with anyone flying on a plane. So this is just someone coming into the hospital or coming to the medical office or whatever. But this case that I'm about to tell you about is something that I've never seen, airplane or no airplane. Okay, this story comes courtesy of Medscape, which I'll put the source right here so you can see. Now, this is a case of a 22-year-old man who's otherwise healthy. He has no significant past medical history, who comes to the ER from the airport in a semi-conscious state after he returns from a three-week vacation in a malarial zone. Now, according to his traveling buddies who were also on the flight, the patient was completely fine when he was boarding the plane. Now, during the flight, the patient falls asleep, and after landing, the patient's companion, his friend or buddy, whoever it was, was unable to wake him up. So, they call EMS, and the paramedics come by, and they scoop him up. When he is examined, they see a man who is physically fit, but he's barely responsive, so minimally arousable. The vital signs, the heart rate, the blood pressure, the oxygen saturation are all normal, except for one thing looks a little bit suspect. That is, his respiratory rate is only seven breaths per minute. His skin looks flushed throughout his body, so it looks like very reddened skin throughout. The rest of the physical exam is normal, except that he has pinpoint pupils. The doctors, they get some blood work, which was normal, except for a mildly elevated creatinine level of 1.2. A chest x-ray is done, and they see something on the chest x-ray that prompts them to shoot the x-ray a little bit lower. So they get the chest x-ray and they see something in this region, they're like, why don't we just shoot that picture a little bit lower to include the abdomen? So they get an abdominal x-ray, and this is what they see. So what are they looking at? Here, I'll put arrows on the screen so it's more obvious. The arrows are pointing to a bunch of condoms in the stomach, in the small intestine, in the colon, and in the rectum. Condoms that are filled with heroin. So putting two and two together, the patient swallowed the heroin-filled condoms and one of them ruptured during the flight, thereby causing the patient's heroin overdose. Now this is known as body packing. When people swallow or pack body orifices, with drugs in order to smuggle them. Body stuffing is a term used to describe when someone swallows drugs in an attempt to avoid prosecution by the police. The first known case of body packing was in 1973 when a body packer had developed a blockage of their small intestine two weeks after first swallowing a condom which was filled with hashish and that actually required the patient to have surgery in order to remove those condoms. The most commonly smuggled drugs via body packing are cocaine, heroin, amphetamines, ecstasy, marijuana, and hashish. Body packers, they usually carry about one kilo of drugs when they're body packing, so about 2.2 pounds, and they're typically divided into a bunch of small packets, like 50 to 100 packets, although there was one time or a few cases where they packed up to 200 uh, packets. Now the drug is first packed into a balloon or a condom, and then with additional layers of latex, and finally, the last step is being sealed with wax, but it only takes for one packet to rupture to threaten someone's life. So it can be one and done for that patient, unless they get emergency medical treatment, but even then, there's no guarantees. Body packing, it should be suspected in anyone who exhibits signs of a drug overdose, especially if they're on an international flight or if they're recently on an international flight. Now, the most important clues to drug intoxication come by assessing the vital signs, the mental status, the pupil size, bowel sounds, and skin findings. 
For example, with an opiate overdose such as heroin, you're going to see very small pupils. But with cocaine or amphetamines, you're going to see very large pupils, very dilated pupils. Now, the first step in someone who's exhibiting drug intoxication symptoms is to stabilize them, which often entails protecting their airway with a breathing tube to ensure that they're getting their breaths and to ensure or doing your best to prevent them from aspirating. Now, if they have a blockage of their intestines, there's different options for treatment. Sometimes irrigating the entire bowel with water or some kind of uh, solution is done to try to facilitate gentle passage of those packets. Sometimes urgent surgery is necessary if there's a tear in the intestine or if the blockage just simply isn't getting better. Now, in this case, the 22-year-old guy, he was given Narcan, aka Naloxone, in order to reverse the effects of the heroin. Now, he underwent surgery to remove the packets, including the packets that ruptured. And he did survive this ordeal, and he eventually made a good recovery. Now, you might think that body packing is only something that you would see many years ago, like in the 80s or 90s, or watching an episode of Narcos. But there have actually been more and more cases of body packing recently because strict border security procedures have made conventional drug smuggling more and more difficult. So it is something to be aware of if you're on an international flight or if you're treating a patient who is recently on an international flight.